Hello everyone, it's Mayo, um, also known as Charizard's Nuts, um, here to commentate uh, another Gemitational set. Um, and I'm joined by Mielke, a good friend of mine, and fellow Brazilian. Hey. What's up guys? Um, so this battle, um, commentated by us Brazilians, is a battle between Ferdazi and Kurtz, two of the best Brazilian players in the scene. Um, yeah, it's super, super hype. Um, yeah, so whenever we're ready, let's get into it. Let's go. So, Tyranitar lead and Tyranitar lead. Interesting switches. Interesting switches. But does he call in the mm -hmm. Skarmory switch? And a right double to Fury. Fury. Should be a spike here from Verdazi, I think. Yeah, so can probably with Ablissi on the back to check so we can... Yeah, definitely need some sort of special wall. And there, there it is. There we go. Hydro Pump, uh, probably not a defensive set, so Blissey walls this for days. Yeah, offensive Hydro Pump. Nice scouting from Kurtz. And a Fire Blast hits Skarm for a ton and gets the burn. That's so a pretty big unlucky. move. Yeah, pretty unlucky for, for Kurtz there. And another double to 4A. I think Kurtz has to force progress with Skarmory, uh, even if the Fire Blast is coming, because sure, it's a yeah. rough matchup. Rodazi calling the focus punch expertly. Mm -hmm. That crit hurts. Yeah. And a Gengar on counter. So Again, probably... players are playing very carefully and scouting the moves like that Charizard switch to scout the Wisp. Mm. Double to Probably Pursuit Tar to catch the Gengar, but instead goes to Suicune. Nice double by Kurtz. Yeah, Scouting so the Blissey. Should, should be a free focus punch here. And Salamence switches in. And That's Dragon unexpected. Dances. Yeah, Dragon... DD Mence on... On Fori, I don't think we see very often. Not really. Goes for the flinch and crits the Suicune instead. Rodazi having a very strong lead right now. Both in spikes and Pokemons. Maybe it should have been an earlier Metagross by Kurtz because Brick DD Mens almost always means no Earthquake. For sure. However, I think the Spike's advantage uh, was huge for Fudazi throughout the mid game. And Suicune having no real way to heal up was something that Fudazi really tried to abuse. Also, yeah, following sure. the Focus Punch was huge. Got a bunch of momentum back. Now it looks sealed. Blissey and Charizard can really make progress and finish the game for Frudaz, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, nice. and the Fire Blast just complete the end. Don't think there's much that this Gengar and Jolteon can do. Gengar seemed a bit underused, but the matchup really is hard to fit because it's probably an offensive Gengar, and offensive Gengar cannot switch into pursue Tarantor very well. So it's understandably a hard matchup for Kurtz to mess around with. Yeah. And booms the Zard and Quagsire, Quagsire revealed. <laughs> Holy crap. It died. Yeah, it just <laughs> bopped. You know, maybe a crit para here could do it. Crit para full para. Yeah. Well, we're one step there. Just a few more lucky turns. Could turn this around. Oh, it's and by Jotian. 
Bite to go for the but yeah, bite T Wave Jolteon to go for the Paraflinch. Oh and get it. If he bit again, maybe he could have done it. He bit and flinched. I definitely go for it. Yeah, now it looks really rough for Kurtz. Yeah, you can bite as many times as you want. I don't think you're ever getting through this pussy. <laughs> yeah. And it's over. <laughs> the main progress maker on Kurt's team on this matchup was clearly the Tyranitar and it got called out really quickly with the Fortress HP bug and that was huge. It really set up the match into something that Fredazi could play really safe and just make um, just general progress just switching in and keeping spikes up. Really interesting game. Yeah. Well, on to game two. Unfortunately, we couldn't see Quagsire do anything, but <laughs> let's see if he can he can he can make some <laughs> nice moves on maybe an next appearance. Do yeah. some foreshadowing. We see double the, the fly gun. Whoa! Fire blast, a mix gone, and on Skarmory spikes. Again, we have the Fortress matchup for for Dazi. Matches a layer, just in case there's a Gengar to block spin. And a focus punch that did less than I would have expected for an against like offensive makes Flygon. Yeah, it's definitely a defensive one. Yeah. Yeah, another spike. And unlucky roar for Kurtz there. Looking like Kurtz doesn't have a Gengar. Comes in on Fire Blast. And Quagsire returns. Maybe he and can heals up. do a better showing now. Perhaps. <laughs> Eats the Surf on the Switch and dodges a Toxic. This guy's so strong. Might might even be the better Water Ground type. For sure. <laughs> I mean, for Dazzy wouldn't use a weak Pokemon, right? Mm. There is a Gengar. <laughs> so the decision to not switch Gengar into Fortress earlier was just to scout the possible Tyranitar double, Pursuit Tyranitar double. Whoa, nice call. And there's a crit. Yeah, Un unlucky crit, but great call from Ferdazi. For sure, now this Tyranitar is basically dead. Another nice crit. Some people like to say that when you're swapping Aerodactyl into Charizard, you're already cooked because you're risking the burn chance. Yeah, and that's definitely something that could happen here. Frudazi again on a very um, aggressive position, where he can just play more mid groundy moves and have progress being done because he has all the spikes advantage, and now Pokemon advantage too. And that's a Big hidden HP. part rest. Yeah, so Pert's gone, and Fredazi still has six Pokemon, relatively healthy. Chooses to not keep the tar for a potential Gengar trap and just sacks it to Zapdos instead. Lacey and Charizard should be able to handle Gengar at this, po at this po position. Yeah. Gengar switches into an Ice Beam, already chipped. I mean, I mean, nothing really wants to switch into Ice Beam now. 
Yeah. Um, I assume the fortress switching was scouting a possible explosion, but... It really helps to play safe too. Now if Daz has a safe switching to Charizard that practically claims a kill here. Or the flag on double. And with the sand ship, the flag on kills the Gengar and... It's ice it should... That means oh, Quagsire nice. walls it. <laughs> and Quagsire tends to do pretty well against rock types too, so... Quag sweep? Let's go. Quagsire shining this game. Second time is the charm, baby. <laughs> well, that did nothing. Yeah, very weak ice beam. <laughs> Resting away the damage and the toxic. Interesting set for Quagsire. Earth could, could try to maybe double edge sweep from this position, but I think that the Charizard is too healthy for that. Yeah. Maybe double crit or even a crit here could change the match, but it doesn't look like it's happening. It looks like Blaze Boosted Flamethrowers are going to clean up. For sure. And Charizard is faster and claims a kill. All I'm saying is, you know, Quagsire was huge this game and Swamper didn't do much, so you know, maybe we should maybe maybe Quagsire is the better water grunt type in, in Gen 3 OU now. I'm inclined to agree with that. Looks like Quagsire should be higher in the viability ranking spot. Yeah, it might just be a top five Pokemon. Looks like it. <laughs> and that's basically it. The Brazilian showdown that happened ended with two wins for Fredazi. Very interesting games. Kind of close ones, actually. I, I'm, I think with some crits or some more flinches in game one, Kurtz could have brought it back on those end game positions, but Prodazi really showed what the Spikes game could, could uh, a better Spikes game can do in the mid game. You can play more safely and just chip away with Spikes and um, safer hits. So I think with this, Prodazi moves on to round three of winner's bracket and Kurtz um, falls to uh, falls to losers. So yeah, still a chance for, for Kurtz and for Dazi sitting pretty. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time, hopefully. See ya.